Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today is the day before the tune and before we do that, I wanted to get some maintenance done and uh, basic maintenance. Maintenance. I already did a boost leak test, which I'll probably do another one as well as uh, we're gonna be changing the plugs right over here and then an oil change, just basic stuff before a tune. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you some of the old spark plugs. I do have these gapped to uh, 0.019, in case you're wondering. Obviously, get this information from your uh, your engine builder, or tuner, where to gap them. I don't know why it's not focusing. But it's uh, 0.019, and I'm about to install the new ones right over here. They're already gapped. I already gapped them to that. All right, guys, just drain the catch can. And we, got, we finally got this uh, fuel pressure regulator situated so as you can tell the car's been off for i would say i don't know like 20 minutes and uh it's still holding pressure which that's what you want so that's good uh, about to do an oil change uh this is the oil that i choose well that i was actually told to use is uh valvoline vr1 20w50 and then i like the knn stuff uh, you don't really need it and i finally got one of these I've been wanting one of these for a while. It's a magnetic drain plug. So it should be uh, real nice. It uh, pulls any metal shavings or anything down and away from the oil. So about to do that right now. Hopefully no issues in the oil, nothing in there. Welcome back guys. The Evo is officially home, which means that it drives on the Haltech. Uh, right now we got the base map on there. And uh, for the most part, everything went well. Um, with the exception of, uh, there's a couple things we're not going to be able to do uh, tomorrow, such as the fuel pressure sensor. We were missing the type of wires that we needed to set it up. Same thing with the oil pressure sensor. These are for the fail safes. And then uh, we actually forgot to uh, hook up the anti-lag. So unless they're able to hook something up tomorrow, which I'm not sure, it looks like we're not going to have anti-lag, so that sucks. But all the other things in the tune should should be, you know, fine. Um, getting the car ready, so just checking fluids once again. Oil change went, went well. Uh, no shavings or anything in the in the oil. Oil looked really clean, even though it had a couple thousand miles on it. And plugs were swapped. I'm going to top off uh, some coolant because it's a little low. And then I'm going to get it ready for tomorrow, get everything uh, kind of situated right over there. Got spare everything, spare plugs. I'm bringing everything, just like last time. So if you watched my uh, Dino Tune video from a year ago, you know that I like to uh, over prepare. Um, we are gonna get the injectors clean tomorrow. So um, I actually forgot the injector seals at Rodney's house. So that means I gotta I gotta wake up even earlier and uh, head over there and handle that. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give you a quick update. And tomorrow's the big day, so uh, wish me luck. And I uh, hope that everything goes well. Yo, what up, guys? On our way to uh, get tuned and uh, stopping at the gas station. The tuner wants me to bring the car on 93, which is kind of weird because this car hasn't really seen 93 like that in a very long time. So uh, about to do that. Guys, we are officially here. Force fit performance. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go inside and see if they want me to take the injectors out so they can be cleaned. All right, guys, got the injectors all cleaned up and everything's good. About to get it in there here soon.
right, for those that uh, have made it this far and you're just looking to get a brief summary of what happened, uh, basically, we, we, we did all this stuff to the car. I invested a lot of money, damn near 10 grand worth of money, and the car is slower, significantly slower than it was on a stock ECU uh, with less stuff that, you know, it obviously shouldn't happen. And I don't want to throw this, this uh, term around because I, I don't like it. Um, however, it is what it is, and it, it's what actually happened, and I was scammed. Um, so the car makes less power um, with a more uh, powerful ECU, which doesn't make sense to me. Same setup, same everything, but um, it makes less power. So uh, for those that are sticking around and want to listen to the story, I do have a few disclaimers. Uh, first and foremost, I don't like drama. I've never been a fan of it. Uh, just not my thing. I'm not a clout chaser. Um, I don't like that type of stuff. It's never been my MO. Um, I understand that this type of video does get a uh, particular following just because of the nature of the video and it's juicy and people want it, want to basically, uh, they're into that stuff. Um, but that's not the, the goal here. Um, as far as uh, the shop owner, um, I'm not gonna use any names. So I'm gonna refer to the shop owner as a shop owner and uh, I'm gonna refer to the tuner as a tuner. I am not going to uh, address them, uh, anything else. I'm also not going to uh, hide anything. So I'm not gonna crop their logos or anything like that, their names off of stuff. So it is what it is. That's the most fair way I can basically tell my story without uh, anybody thinking I'm being biased. Anyways, so uh, got the car over there. As you guys saw, the car got uh, got tuned. Um, halfway through the tune, actually, the, the, the car was on, down, first and foremost, the car was on the dyno for four hours, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's, that's probably more than the car spent on the dyno for the first and second tune. And that was after a brand new engine build with a whole new setup. So it was kind of wild. So there were some issues uh, up top, uh, high boost. Once once the car actually started making power, uh, there was uh, issues with uh, with the power band up top where you see it's wavy. Um, from what I know and what the, tune, the tuner basically uh, discussed, which was very little with me, uh, it had to do something with the boost controller, but he told me it was fixed, so I didn't even question it. Anyways, halfway through that tune, the, the tuner kept calling the shop owner back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, there, was, there was one specific moment where I looked worried because I was thinking to myself, and I'm not a tuner, so so I mean, I'm just utilizing logic here, but um, I was thinking it was gonna be a pretty, pretty seamless process where the the old setup, you already have the old parameters from the from the old uh, old ECU. You would basically switch it over and uh, basically, you know, just just mesh it over to this Hall Tech. Um, however, I, I don't know if that's how it works. That's just how I pictured it. Um, so I looked worried, and uh, the shop owner came over, and I remember I don't remember what he what triggered him to say this, but I do remember verbatim. This is what he said. He said. We can tell you the car made 700 and you would never know. Uh, so one thing that I haven't mentioned to you guys where I feel I messed up is uh, I told both the shop owner and the tuner that I'm leaving. Um, so I am leaving here. I'm currently in North Carolina. I'm uh, going somewhere else. I'm in the military. So I made the mistake of telling them that I was leaving. Um, and it's no secret that these guys don't like me. Um, they haven't liked me. I can't speak for the tuner. Uh, I know he doesn't like me now, but um, the shop owner, didn't like me in the past because when he built the engine, uh, we ran into some issues where I, uh, I I called him out on missing timelines. It wasn't anything crazy. I actually, I'll post the video. Somehow he, he managed to watch the video. And uh, last year I noticed that I was blocked from their Instagram, which um, I, I've never even interacted with them on Instagram. So I, somebody went out of their way to block me. So if I had to summarize what happened throughout that tune, I think the tuner bit off more than he could chew with something and he ran into an issue where he's that, that he's never ran into before and um he and the shop owner discussed something and uh they basically came to the conclusion we don't like this guy he's leaving anyways he's an idiot which they do think i'm stupid um so basically let's just finesse the dyno and make it look like it's something that it's not and uh, he will never know. He's an idiot anyways. He's leaving. We don't have to deal with him. So that's what I think happened. Uh, that's my theory of what, 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 went, uh, what went on. Um, so basically to fast forward, I, uh, I also made the mistake of telling him that I'm going to baby the car because, because the car's getting shipped and I didn't want any issues 
and I didn't want to have to haul around a car that I couldn't drive. So I told him I was going to baby the car. So anyways, I drove the car home. Uh, I did one little baby pull. I maybe hit 10 pounds of boost, nothing crazy. Um, and uh, drove it back home. It was about a two and a half hour drive home. No issues or anything. I only drive this car like once a week. So that happened on a Wednesday. Three days go by. And I finally decide on a Saturday, hey, you know what? I'm going to drive the Evo. I'm going to take it to the gym. So I go to the gym and uh, I said, screw it. You know what? I, I spent all this time and money. I might as well see if I got my money's worth with this Holotech. So I, I do one pull um, and the car just feels so fucking slow. Like it was crazy, man. It was crazy how slow that car felt. It felt like the old setup that I used to have in this car with the stock block and a baby, uh, BBK full turbo, which is a, a little baby. It's like, uh, it's smaller than the FP green. Um, and I was, I was only doing like 27 pounds of boost back then. So that, it felt slightly faster than that. My M2 competition felt faster than the Evo and uh, it just didn't make sense. So I gave the benefit of the doubt to everybody, man. Honestly, I really did. I, I was thinking, I hit up Rodney and I was thinking to myself and I even said it to him verbally. Like maybe, maybe the, the ECU is just putting the, the power down, you know, a certain way where it feels like it's slower, but it's really just really putting the power down. A lot of these newer cars are like that, where you, you mash on the gas and you don't even realize you're doing a hundred and, uh, you know, it just feels like anything. The Evo is a little bit different because it has that power where it, it always kicks you in the face and even a stock form, it, it, it has that, that ability where, you know, it, it's just a very torquey car. And the power just was not there. And um, I'm like, man, this doesn't make sense. So I decided to hit up the, the, the tuner that night and he actually replied relatively quick. Um, and I asked him, hey, well, I told him, I said, hey, the car feels extremely slow. What's the deal? Um, and he, this is, this is probably clue number one. He admitted that he noticed something with the car. So I'm actually gonna show you the two dyno charts and I have them here. As you can see, so the one on the right is the, the one from last year, and that's on a stock ECU. And then the one on the left is from this year that just happened. And if you look at, um, this is when I started paying attention to the dyno charts, because I have no reason to doubt these guys. I really trusted them. Um, so I'm not a dyno chart kind of guy that's, you know, looking at the numbers and all that stuff. It's the same exact setup. In my opinion, like I, I just thought, hey, you know, it's gonna be the same exact way. So it shouldn't matter. I started paying attention to the dyno chart. And if you look at the, the one from uh, last year, at 5,100 RPMs, I'm making 455 horsepower, give or take. This year, there's no 5,100, but at 5,000, so 100 RPMs less, I'm not even making 300 horsepower. So I'm making 280. And that just blew my mind. And that's when I started having second thoughts. Uh, at this time, I'm still giving the, 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 the guy the benefit of doubt so I'm like, hey man, I noticed some things with the with, with the graph, what gives? And he's like, oh yeah, I noticed, I noticed those things. And uh, it, it, it's a pretty significant lag. Uh, changes in power and lag. So if you're looking at it, I hit I hit peak power in the old setup at 6140 RPMs. And this one it's 6500 is when I just start, you know, basically getting at, at peak power. That's 400, 500 RPMs difference. That's a lot for considering it's the same turbo. It's the same setup, same everything. This, this setup doesn't even have 10,000 miles on it. Anyways, he said he noticed it as well. And that was the, the first clue. Why would you notice something like that and, and think it, wasn't be, it wouldn't be a good idea to tell the, 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 the guy who owns the car? Like, hey man, I noticed uh, something, something's up with the car. What's the deal? Hey, did, what did you add? What something, ask questions, something to figure out what it is. He did say he tried to lower to, to, to make it spool quicker, but he wasn't able to, and it just didn't make sense. So I'm still giving the guy the benefit of the doubt, and uh, we get to talking to about the intercooler. Maybe maybe it was the intercooler, I don't know. So um, the very next day I decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna slap the old intercooler on, I do. And um, same thing, same exact thing. Keep in mind, same exact size intercooler. Yeah, they're different brands, but it's the same size. Same diameter piping too. Um, and uh, I know for a fact it's not the fuel pressure regulator. So uh, things just didn't make sense. So at this point, I'm starting to get frustrated just because none of this stuff is making sense and the car just feels slow. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of these new gauges. Um, I, I mentioned in my last video, but you have to sit there and stare at the gauge. 
I guess I could probably open up the laptop and, and check on the, the hall tech, but I haven't learned how to do that yet. So that's something I gotta get used to. I made it a point to pay attention to the boost gauge. I, I specifically made it big just so I could stare at it. And I'm sitting there mashing on the gas, watching this fucking boost gauge, and I can't even hit 25 pounds of boost. And that's when I realized I truly had an issue. And that's when things just, everything just went, started going south. And I started thinking back to everything that happened throughout this whole process. And I started recollecting back to everything. So I hit up Rodney and Rodney has uh, the idea to, hey, let's throw this thing on a dyno. We have a shop right down the street. They have an all-wheel drive dyno. Um, let's get it on the dyno and see what's up. So at first I was kind of against it, but you know what? I decided, hey, you know, I deserve some, um, some closure at a minimum for all this stuff that's going on. I decided to uh, call them that very next day and I, I wasn't trying to waste any time. So this happened on a Saturday where I found out the car was slow. Um, by that Monday, I was already calling that place, letting them know, Monday morning, I was, I was calling that place, letting them know, hey, what's up? Can you get me on the dyno? Unfortunately, they were booked. So I had to wait till that Friday to actually get on there. So Friday comes by, I didn't. I don't talk to these guys, I stopped talking to them. The, the tutor for this shop shows up, I only paid for the dyno tune, it was like 150 bucks, um, or the, the dyno uh, session, it was like 150 bucks. And um, get, get the car on the thing, and as you guys are seeing the, the footage right now, <laughs> damn near 200 horsepower less. And on that dyno, it should be reading way higher. You guys you guys know if you've been around, Mustang dynos read read higher um, than the dyno jet ones. Uh, one thing I did learn is the dyno jet ones, supposedly you can't tamper with those. Anyways, uh, car makes uh, horrific power, which is uh, atrocious and um, kind of embarrassing, man. Cause that's when I obviously, I confirmed that I've been scammed. And uh, the tuner was nice enough, the, the tuner over here, was nice enough to take a look because he, he uh, supposedly he knows Haltech really well. Uh, that's what everybody, everybody vouched for him. And that's when he told me that basically the car was set up to run the way that it is. So this isn't like a boost leak or anything like that. When it was ran on a dyno, um, he even hooked up his own, uh, he tapped into the vacuum lines uh, for the uh, fuel pressure regulator and um, it read the boost from there. So the boost is correct, everything. And he took a look at, 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 at the, uh, the stuff in the, in the hall tech. And uh, basically he, he said, the car is being told to do this. And like, that's confirmation that and he showed it to me too. He showed it to Rodney too. He saw it as well. He saw, hey, look at this. The guy was even able to actually, he guessed what spring was on the, the wastegate uh, based off of the parameters that were set. He, he guessed it too. He said, he said, if I were to guess, you, you have a, like, a, like a 15, 15 pound spring in there. And I was like, yeah, it's a one bar spring, which is 14 pounds. So like the guy knew what he was talking about. Um, the reason why I didn't choose uh, for him to tune the car, um, number one, I, I don't want to be at the mercy of my location. So I'm getting ready to leave. And um, I want to take this car to where I want to take it to next. And number two, I, uh, I don't want anything to break. I've already, this car was just beat on, on, a, on a dyno for for four hours and you know, it ended up being slower. I don't want anything to break on this car and then I'm, I'm stuck with a broken car that I can't ship and you don't have to worry about. So that, those are two reasons why I didn't have it tuned over here. Anyways, uh, fast forwarding, you guys have seen the, the dyno results. Um, I decide to uh, to hit up the, 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 the shop. So I, uh, I <laughs> I kind of did in a petty way, but I'm not going to get too much into what happened afterwards just because at that point I feel like I'm gossiping, but I decided to hit up the shop um, and I regurgitated uh, some things that were said to me 
uh, as far as the, the the quote earlier about uh, if uh, the car, we can tell you the car makes 700, but you would never know. So I said that to the shop. Of course, they didn't reply. I had the tuner and um, he uh, he did respond, but of course it's denial, denial, denial. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically where we're at right now. Um, it's, um, I know I'm smiling, but honestly, I, I, I was so aggravated and I couldn't sleep for days. I don't even know if I, I probably look tired of shit. I haven't been able to sleep in a while. So it's not necessarily this, it's all this stuff going on, moving and all that stuff. It's, it's a lot going on. Um, so as far as where we're at now, I've been in contact with, uh, with a shop. I don't want to mention who they are yet. Cause number one, I don't know if I'm going to them yet. And number two, I don't want to get involved in all this stuff. So it kind of is what it is as far as what, what's going to happen with, with everything. I'm not sure. So if I'm able to uh, recoup some of that money for the, the tune, then I'll obviously put that towards the tune. This tune was not cheap guys. I, I didn't even mention it. This tune was a uh, $1,300 plus tax. So we're looking at $1,400 out the door, uh, which is a lot. So uh, I'm not rich, obviously. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not rich. So um, losing $1,400 like that, and then to have a slower car, that, that's, that's like a double hit to me. Um, Cause now I gotta spend the money to, to get another tune and all the other shit that comes with it. So yeah, it's basically where we're at. Um, am I telling you to not go to the shop? No, I'm not. I'm not telling you that. This, this shop has been in, in business for a very long time. And um, you know, I, I'm not gonna go against that. I'm not gonna challenge their, you know, reputation, all that stuff. That's not what I'm telling you. Am I saying that, you know, the tuner meant to do this and he maliciously planned this or anything like that? No, I'm not. Um, am I saying not to go to the tuner? No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Um, all the other tunes that I've gotten from this tuner, stock ECU has been solid. And from what I've been able to see, EcuTech seems to be uh, his bread and butter between stock ECU and EcuTech. Uh, now that Cobb is kind of not really existent um, thanks to the EPA. Am I saying that the tuner didn't try to fix the issue? No, I'm not. He actually, if, if I had to, to say, like he spent a lot of time um, trying to, to figure out whatever was wrong with the car, four hours. Um, so he did try his best. Where he went wrong is he gave me a product that wasn't actually what it was. And I don't know what led him to do that. Um, I don't know if it's the things I already discussed, uh, but basically that is where I have the, the biggest issue. The guy could have came to me and be like, hey, I know you're leaving. Um, I can't figure this out. I don't know what's going on with it. You, I, you don't have the time, I don't have the time. Hey, you know, I'll charge you a portion of the tune. All right, bet, cool. We're good with that. We'd have figured something out. But he, they basically led me to believe that I got something that I didn't. And by definition, that is a fraud and a scam. It, they're, they're synonymous. So that is where this became a big problem. As far as the car and everything else, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I'd be doing this stuff without YouTube anyways. Um, I'm just now sharing progress with you. You may be asking yourself, why are you telling us this? Why are you, why are you sharing this with, with, with us basically? And uh, reason number one, I do know some of you guys are invested in this uh, build, not necessarily like financially or anything like that, but just uh, generally speaking, you're, you're, you wanna see what's going on. Um, and I've already led you down this road you know, showing you all this progress, I might as well show you the finale, even though it didn't end up how we, uh, how we wanted to. So that's reason number one. Uh, reason number two is I'm not a, I'm not a kid. And this is probably my biggest gripe with this, with this shop is that they talk to you like you're stupid and they talk down to you. Everybody that I've met that's that's newly gone to the shop has said the same thing. That they, that's the way that they do business. And I don't know why that is. Um, so I'm basically saying if if it happened to me, I'm not a kid. I'm obviously older. Um, they could definitely happen to, you know, the, the, the typical 21, 22 year old guy. Just be careful. That's basically uh, what I'm getting at. This is my first time ever getting scammed. And it would be something like this that's not tangible. So this could have happened to anybody that was in my shoes, in my opinion, at least. And uh, number three, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because uh, I do know for a fact this uh, irritated the shop owner the first uh, the first time, which is why they don't like me. In case I haven't shared that with you, um, 
these guys don't like me. So the shop owner doesn't like me. So back when the car was being built, the I basically called the, the shop owner out just because uh, he missed deadlines. And um, something was supposed to take two weeks and it ended up taking damn near three months. So one of the videos, I literally just said it just like that. Even in that video, I even said, you know, they know what they're doing everything. I said, the customer service is not great and they're missing the timelines and that's it. And for whatever reason, he got upset. You may be asking yourself, hey, if you don't like each other, why would you go there? And at the end of the day, this is business and I'm, we don't have to like each other. That's fine. I'm not, I, we don't have to be friends. Uh, I'm paying you for a service. And up until now, they delivered on the service. Yeah, the customer service wasn't great, but as far as service and, and the actual end product, I've never had any issues with these guys. So um, it just goes to show you that, you know, it could happen to anybody. So uh, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this one. I wanna give a huge thanks to Rodney for always being there. Um, if it wasn't for him, none of this stuff would be possible with the car, even though it didn't end well. The good news is the car is, it works, it runs, there's no damage to it. I don't have any codes on a Haltech or anything like that. So um, the car is good. Uh, the, another good news is the Haltech is installed. So all that stuff is done. I just gotta get it to the right guy to, to basically do that stuff uh, and get it tuned correctly. I also wanna thank uh, a couple other people. You know who you are. You don't wanna be mentioned in this video, but you know who you are. I appreciate the, the support and all that stuff. Uh, some of those guys were some of the, the ones that helped me uh, figure out what, what was actually going on. Um, but. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I uh, I appreciate you guys joining me. If you watch all this shenanigans, then I really appreciate you. You're a real one. Stay tuned for more content coming your way. Peace.